Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's that fucking panda. I'm here with Ron Gallo. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I'm stoked. Thank you. It's the first time I've, <laughs> I've spoken with a panda before. So thank well, you. Well, you know, we are endangered, but we're friendly. <laughs> people <laughs> so. need to become endangered, I think. More pandas, less people. Hey, I'm no, all for that. <laughs> panda Yo, power, no. Yeah, let me clarify that I do not mean what I just said. I'm just joking. No, oh, that's okay. We we love people. We love pandas. We're all just <laughs> trying to get along here and and be yes. a, be the panda human that we're meant to be. <laughs> yes, yes. So I love just. I was just reading everything about you. Um, tell me, tell me when you first experienced your spiritual awakening. Oh Lord, um, <laughs> just going in know. hot. <laughs> I don't know if if that's happened. I mean, I guess in life there's series of of moments where you kind of feel like you know you kind of have like a little bit of a shift or like the veil gets lifted for a second and you actually feel more alive than you normally do um mm, yeah. it's pretty random uh and i guess it's happened to me a handful of times i think it happens to everybody sometimes it's after something really difficult or terrible happens and then it's kind of like this opening um but yeah, I don't know. That's uh, it's happened a handful of times. Um, I love that. I feel like yeah. that's happening a lot with, which is everything that happened this past year with COVID, everyone losing jobs, a lot of stuff that everyone's kind of experiencing like a shift in their mindset a little bit, you know, kind of like of seeing like what's what's really important, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So I love that you're combining Zen in your album stardust birthday party like you're bringing zen and punk together um what do you think the benefit would be if more more punk music had you know zen influences like how do you think that would affect the world um yeah i guess it's interesting because i feel like those two mindsets are are somewhat similar at least they make sense to me and that's why that record because when you think of Zen, I think people think of like floating on a cloud of bliss and like, yeah, man. But mm -hmm. actually, I think kind of the internal journey is actually really chaotic and destructive and noisy. Yes. Um, and so that record sounding like that, I think, is much more like what you think that, you know, spiritual Zen process is. So I could destroy people's ideas about that. I love that. Um, <laughs> that's so cool because I, uh, I recently just became like a breathwork teacher, <laughs> meditation oh, teacher. <laughs> but uh, so I had like my own little spiritual thing. But I love punk music and all that. And I feel like there's this like dissonance where people feel that they have to be like this like super zen, like you know, peaceful person. But you can be angry and mad and have high energy and still have those like moments of. You know, peace and calm and just being right here in the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's in all of us. I mean, it, nobody's just calm and blissed out all the time. Nope. There's, you know, <laughs> it's all going on. There's like good, there's evil, it's all in there. And I think that's the whole thing is like accepting all the whole picture. Totally. And yeah. having a place to like release it. So, yeah, exactly, cool. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, can you tell me a little bit about your, um, <clears throat> the Nice Guys EP and how it started off as a joke? All good things start off as a joke. <laughs> yeah. <why> <laughs> um, you know, when I put out my first record, it led to things I never dreamed of really doing, situ like touring all over the world endlessly with no break and people coming to the shows. And like the whole thing changed um, mm. where suddenly it was like all in this music industry thing now. And I it's hard for me to kind of like swallow that stuff and take it seriously. So kind of my way to deal with like my newfound role as like a touring musician in the music industry was I had to kind of make fun of it, I think, and comment on it. And so that's where the idea for the EP came, just kind of like, you, you kinda like observing like the ridiculous shit that you see yeah, and witness and deal with in, in the, the music world. Um, totally. and yeah, and then it just kind of like poured out hey, because it's it's just like a reflection of what the reality we've been living. So it just was pretty effortless, kind of joke, careless approach to making an EP. So mm, I love that so much. Um, 
yeah, the music industry is crazy. <laughs> uh, I worked worked Something. in it as well, um, aside from being a panda. <laughs> but uh, much better. This is much better. This is this is way more fun. I'm like nobody gets mad at me. I can do whatever I want. And they're just like, well, it's yes. a panda. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so you've gone on tour with some of like my favorite bands, like the OCs, the Black Angels, Fiddler, all bands I've done some crowd surfing for. Um, oh, nice. I would love to crowd surf at one of your shows. That'd be dope. But uh, what's like? What's one of your favorite bands that you've gone on tour with and like why? We've been so lucky to just every band we've shared the road with has been just incredible people and love the music. It's hard to choose. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, and especially because it's like the last proper tour and the longest one went on was uh, with Post Animal, which was exactly two years ago today that tour ended and it was a month long. We did like full US and that was that was awesome. And the Fiddler, the time we played with Fiddler was the first time in my life I ever crowd surfed. It was in Atlanta. God, what did that feel like? <laughs> so good. It was just such a, it's such a surrender, you know? You just, you know, like, fuck it. Just go you just release. You just, you just hope that they're going to catch you. And do you yeah. uh, have any crowd surfing tips? I know I got some. <laughs> um, I, I don't have a ton of experience. I've done it a few mm. times at, at our yeah. shows. And like I said, it was the first time at, somebody else's show that I did it, but I guess you just kind of got to commit. Um, yeah. I've also seen people not pay attention to, to peep the actual crowd and just go for it and have just fallen flat on their face. Oh. So just like make sure that people are ready for you, I guess. Totally. I know, maybe. Yeah. I always like to do like, you have to have your arms up straight and your legs together. Cause if your legs are wobbling and you kick someone, then you're in the wrong. But if you got that like straight leg and arms, you're yeah. good. And then, Ab, you have to hold your abs really tight and then you look for like three tall guys and make sure there's no like gaps holes of like small girls next to it and then you just go for it so a system yeah you gotta like, <laughs> just be a plank yeah a plank upside down plank yeah. and those um, are the days. Those are the days. <laughs> right on so without touring like what have you been doing to stay you know busy stay happy like positive what what have you been doing um, it's definitely been a roller coaster. I finished this record, the new one that comes out, uh, piecemeal in the very beginning of mm -hmm. last March, actually. Wow. So I got kind of the musical stuff out of the way early on, but then I kind of, the big things I learned how to relax, which is not something I've ever been good at in my life. Um, and I put a lot of effort and kind of energy into this thing called really nice that I started. It's a website and I turned it into a clothesline. I ran it as a digital festival in the beginning of quarantine. And it's also just a website where I just post like random shit that I write. I've, I interviewed a bunch of people. So a lot of my creative energy has gone into that and not music, I think, over the last year. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So you had like you were supposed to play the Melt It Festival and then you did that instead. So did you have like a series of live streams on that or? So yeah, we, I put together, um, I took, I took like six months off cause I was super burnt from basically three year, t four years of touring Yeah. and our first show back was supposed to be that festival melted fest in Columbus on March 13th. Okay. And I put together a new band, bunch of new songs, flew a drummer in from Philly. We were all excited. And then it got canceled the day before. And so I had a very instinctual response where I was like, why don't we just go? to the music shop, get whatever gear we need. Let's just do a live broadcast from my house. We'll do two shows, US and Europe. And this is sort of before live streaming became the norm over the last year. Totally. And it was incredible. I mean, thousands and thousands of people tuned in and sent like crazy donations. And that was kind of like the pinnacle of live stream. And then it just slowly declined because people got tired of it and you know, had no money left to support people doing it, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad that you were able to have that at the beginning, you know, and like give this like message of hope for people. And it's it seems like it's coming back soon. So I'm keeping my fingers yes. crossed. Yeah, um, there's real hope in the air again. It's weird. There is. It's, it feels good. I feel like the energy is just like lighter and people are like starting to see the light. So, yes, um, yes, I love that. So tell me about I know you worked with Karen, <clears throat> Carolyn Rose on the song You Are Enough. What was it like working with her? Um, I mean, I've known Caroline for a bunch of years now. Uh, we've been friends and we're, we're label mates and we've played shows and I've always wanted to collaborate with her in some way. And mm -hmm. uh, when it came time to kind of put together some remixes for this record, she was one of the first people to came to mind. And I sent her the original and she came back with this idea that I was like, 
I cannot hear that at all, but you do you and I trust you and, and uh, it turned out awesome. It's like the exact opposite of the original. It's like some Berlin techno nightclub mix and it's, it's cool. I love it. <laughs> Listening yeah, to earlier, yeah. I was like, this is dope. Yeah. Um, that's cool. All right. So I know, um, so San Diego is known for their tacos. Have you ever had a uh, Philly taco and any recommendations? Oh my God. You know, it's funny. I was just walking down the street the other day and I saw a sign for the home of the Philly taco, the uh-huh. cheesesteak wrapped in pizza, right? Yeah. 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 That's what I'm talking that about. is the most fucked up. Oh my God. That's, that's <laughs> madness. So no, I've never had one. I mean, I've had the ingredients separately. I haven't had a cheesesteak in probably 10 years. Okay. Uh, You're from Philly though, time. right? I or, am. And I actually but, live here again as of, okay. uh, three and a half weeks ago. We just okay. moved back. So right on. But No Philly tacos for me, but that's San cool. Diego. Kalima's. Oh. I want to shout out Kalima's. Have you ever I live there? right next to Kalima's, <laughs> like a block from my house. I'm like, I may well go get there later. I, uh, <laughs> I love Kalima's. Kalima's is the every shit. Every time. We go mm. every time. Yes. It's they so have awesome. like a shrimp chipotle burrito that is like, woo, so oh, good. Man, I miss um, it. <laughs> shout out. Yeah, come visit. I'll crowd surf at your show. Okay. <laughs> so you kind of like, you, you were telling me you're playing music and stuff, and then you went straight into like touring and, you know, made that album and went into the music industry. Like, what can you tell, like, new artists that want to, like, make it and want to start touring? Like, what advice can you give, like, new artists that are just ready to, like, go for it? Um, expectations low. Uh, not that you won't surpass them, but it is rough and it all out there and it gets more difficult, I feel like, as time goes on. Um, and the other thing is just be genuine all the time do whatever you absolutely love. The rest does not matter. The labels, the industry, all that stuff. You know, maybe it'll come to you, but as long as you l- absolutely love what you're making and who you're making it with, all the other shit really doesn't matter and will have no effect on your, you know, your value or your happiness. Um, oh. And once you build something up, be sure to value yourself because this is sort of designed for artists and art to be devalued. So that's what I got. I love that so much. And it's so true because I feel like there's so much pressure on artists to like perform at a certain level and do this. But the whole point of making music and art is to have fun, is to like release your creative energy into a project. And then like, I don't know, I've had artists reach out and be like, what if no one listens to my stuff? What if no one likes it? I'm like, well, did you enjoy making it? Because that's all that really matters. And then people will like, somebody's going to relate to it. Someone's going to like it. And then you just grow your skills. So that's yeah, you dope. can't worry about the outcomes. They're yeah. they're not, and I know it's easy to get obsessed with the outcomes, but zero control, and they're just going to cause you pain and take away from the point. So, yeah. yeah. Remember, you are enough, <laughs> Ron Gallo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I tell cool. myself all the time. And um, lastly, I know your new album is coming out piecemeal, uh, March fifth. So we want to talk a little bit about that, and yeah. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's it's a new world for me. Uh it's really the result of crash and burn from the previous chapter and then just starting to make music again and being like I don't really give a shit about anything I've made before this. What do I like now? What feels genuine now? Mm. What 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 makes me happy? And then this record is just kind of a result of that. And so for anybody that's familiar with the previous, it's uh nothing near it. So have no expectation, but it's definitely my favorite one. So I, mm. uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a chameleon. I'm all over the place, and uh, I don't know. I hope people. I hope people can get that. Or not. I you know, it doesn't matter. Can't control the outcome. Who cares? <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Don't don't care. Any last words? Message of hope for the world for your fans. Um. I mean, I think that's it. I think finally, I feel like there is hope to latch onto. Very tangible, yes. real hope, and I just feel like we keep going that way good work everybody for getting through this and adapting yeah and uh you know i just hope to see some people this year it'd be awesome yeah Thank hopefully you. we see you at a show see you at a festival see you crowd I think surfing so. I, think I think it's in the gonna fall. happen i think late fall i think it's gonna be realistic so yes let's look absolutely. forward absolutely yeah. all right cool well thank you so much for taking thank the time you. check out ron gallo he's the man and make some music make some art with low expectations and just have fun <laughs> yes yes All right. (laughs) See you guys.